Blazers fall to the Nuggets 106-97, but it's the preseason, and there's still plenty good to draw from this game. To talk more about this one and this team, let's be now joined by Nate Tibbetts, Blazers assistant coach. And, Nate, that first quarter, that was a thing of beauty against Denver. What were your thoughts? Hey, guys, how we doing? Oh, we're doing well, doing real well. Yeah, uh, we got off to a hot start, you know. Um, I thought we did a really good job getting getting in the paint, being aggressive, getting downhill, and, uh, you know, we're playing that smaller lineup and creating space for our guards to penetrate. And Denver was playing the two bigs, and, you know, they got sucked in and let El Farouk uh, get some good looks. You know, the one thing when – when you're making shots, you know, we, I think we finished the quarter maybe up five or six. You know, we didn't ever really separate. Sometimes, you know, when, when you're making shots like that, you think it's going to be easy. So defensively, you maybe don't get after it like you need to. But, you know, when you're making shots like that, you'd like to come out of that quarter up 10 or 12. What were some of the things on defense that you noticed when you went back and watched this game that things that you would like to see sort of get cleaned up? Well, I think, um, you know, they shot it pretty well from the three-point line. Uh, that's an area that we want to we want to do a better job percentage defending the three. And then also, you know, I think they shot 18 free throws in the first half. So we want to be physical and try to defend without fouling. So those two areas uh, were two things we talked about today. Share with us, Coach, sort of what position group or what's your focus uh, with this staff as far as some of the roles that you are primarily responsible for? Um, with Jay Trattle leaving, I, I've kind of switched over to uh, the offense. Uh, David Vanderpool and I did the defense together last year, and Jay did the offense. Uh, this year, I'm – Assistant carry offensively. I mean, the great thing about Coach Dots is he he lets us coach on both sides of the ball. But as far as uh, post game edits and stuff like that, uh, I focus more on the offensive end. Terry is a great offensive guy, so I'm just kind of throwing out suggestions, uh, maybe different looks, give him something to think about. And then as far as personnel goes, probably the three guys that I I uh, have focused the most time with the last, you know, years, probably Al Farouk, um, Alan Crabb, and, and guys uh, that uh, I spend the most time with just as far as the skill development, the video on a day-to-day basis. Doing my pre-show scouting of you, uh, mm-hmm. you hear the term assistant coach, and you certainly put the assist in that. Second all-time at University of South Dakota in career assists and and, an inductee into the Hall of Fame in 2014. Is that correct? Yes, it is. Yeah, yep. Coach, you're you're a Hall of Famer. We got a Hall of Famer on the show. Come on, Coach, don't be hemming and hawing with that. (laughs) What what was your reaction when you – Got the? How did they notify you? Was it a letter in the mail? Was it a phone call? Did they, was it a carrier pigeon that sent over an announcement like that? <laughs> well, yeah, South Dakota, we still use carrier pigeons. So, <laughs> uh, no, it was exciting. You know, um, you know, growing up in South Dakota, there wasn't none of the schools at that time were were Division One schools. Uh, when I was there, it was Division Two school. Um, the coach that was there for 25 years was ha, had a lot of good point guards that had come through there. Um, my dad was a former coach. Uh, he coached at the University of South Dakota. He was the women's coach in the late 80s and early 90s. So uh, it was it was a great opportunity for me to go and play in front of my uh, home state per se. And then you know my senior year, my brother came and. He also played at the University of South Dakota. So it was a great experience. We won a ton of games, and I, I got to play with a uh, – it was fun to, to, to go back and to the Hall of Fame, and I try to get down to the Vermillion, South Dakota, as much as I can when I'm home in the summers just to kind of, uh, you know, see, see the players now and, and the new staff. Is South Dakota the best Dakota? <laughs> uh 
When it comes between North and South Dakota, yeah, I don't think there's any question South Dakota's better. <laughs> what would be the main reason to go to South Dakota outside of seeing Mount Rushmore? Uh, that might be it. <laughs> uh, there's good people there. You know, um, obviously I don't miss uh, the snow and the cold, but I have a lot of family there, and um, – We've got a lake house in the middle of South Dakota. We try to get to as much as we can in the summer. Um, but it, as you guys know, our, our summers, it's its a full-time job pretty much anymore. So uh, we get there when we can. And uh, just nice people, not, not super crowded. There's space to move around, which is nice. Coach, uh, as a guy, as a player, you, you certainly understand the, the art of the assist. You know, looking at this Denver game, going back to that first quarter and – and the post being open and, and guards having a lot of room, as you said, you know, to dribble downhill, I believe was the term you used. And the bigs being out on the floor, Harkless and Al Farouk Aminu combined for six of the seven three-pointers made in that first quarter. Is that inverted offense concept intentional or, or, or just a response to how the defense matched up? Yeah, I mean, I think it's kind of the way the league is going, right? I mean, playing smaller, more mobile fours. Uh, guys that can stretch the floor and especially uh, for us you know having three guys that can handle with Evan TJ and Dane um, those guys are pretty good pick and roll players just giving them more room on the floor uh, even with Myers a guy that can can stretch the floor and you know Noah has shot better uh, as a four man so you know us making the transition this, this summer to kind of move Al Farouk uh, to the four more on a full-time basis. Yeah, I think I think you're going to see more space uh, for our guys to attack, and I, I think they like that room. You know, Coach, just thinking about that, and I'm visualizing that as you're saying that, you know, an open post and, and bigs out on the floor making plays or, or, or knocking down threes, how does that impact uh, the art of rebounding? Because – when I think about the game of basketball, you think about the tall guys are close to the basket and they get right. the rebounds and the little guys are out and they run the floor, but the game's really changed. Yeah, it has. I mean, it's one of the things that we've uh, battled here trying to talk about rebounding. Uh, one of the things that we've done here lately, we've been a pretty good off the rebounding team, but with so much space on the floor, I mean, you guys know, I mean, the history of basketball is, if God goes up and you're not in the pain areas, a lot of times it's, it's hard to get rebounds. Um, so just getting our guys used to maybe rebounding in space uh, is, is a little bit different than, than what, what they've been used to. You know, Coach, I, I remember, I think it was two seasons ago, uh, the season started with, with Dame and getting a lot more rebounds than he'd gotten the previous year and had a chance to to ask him about it and he said that coach Dossett pointed out that if guards could rebound and start to break uh, it would help the big guys out and mm -hmm. is that something that's going to continue to trend I mean I go back to thinking the Magic Johnson's the best right. rebounding guards always played on good fast breaking teams yeah I mean I, I think you probably even from two years ago you know when we made the transition to you know when we had Wesley and LaMarcus and Nick you know, we weren't a big break team. We weren't getting out. But now on, on defensive rebounding, we, we, we want to look to push that thing. You know, Evan's a good defensive rebounder. Dane has improved. And, you know, Mason, <laughs> when he gets defensive rebounds, he, he likes to bring it up. Last night there was possession where I think Noah got a defensive rebound. And I'll let it to our five-man and Mason. So um, I think it, it creates problems. Uh, for the opposing team when you have different guys that can handle in transition. And we just need to make sure that if we're playing fast or getting out on the break, we, we have to limit our turnovers. Coach, thank you again for joining us. I think Michael and I will certainly find some time to visit South Dakota. There, there, there's got to be some good restaurants there too. But thank you again for taking time out of your day to join us and uh, enjoy the rest of the day. All right, guys. Thanks a lot. Thank <laughs> you.